Hey, if you like this video, please share it with your friends. Hit the subscribe button and the notifications. I'd really appreciate the support. And I really appreciate if you watch the whole video. It helps my channel out and helps me helps the channel grow. Thank you. In the meantime, have a great day and live loud. So today I'm going to hit upon, once again, something that is not talked about a lot. It is not sexy. It is not... Uh, it's not typically what we're talking about on Twitter or YouTube. It's not a stock, but it's bonds. And if you go back in time and you look at some, at some of the greatest trades, the, the, uh, the sorrows uh, breaking the British pound or um, one of, you know, Stanley Drunkenmiller's creation of wealth throughout history, um, look at Citadel, which is a hedge fund out of Chicago, the majority of these guys are trading not stocks, but bonds and currency. And today I'm going to talk about the bond market and the Sherman ratio and how we may be looking at a breakdown in the bond market if the Fed sneezes. So about 20 some years ago, I took the Series 7 exam and that was a securities licensing exam that um, all financial advisors have to take to be able to advise and offer um, securities. So uh, stocks, bonds, uh, mutual funds, all that. And so I took a class and the guy who was teaching the class was a retired 36 year old bond trader who had just retired from trading bonds with one of the big bond houses in uh, on Wall Street. And I learned that these are the guys who are making serious money. And when I talk about serious money, I'm not talking about, you know, two or three times on a stock trade. I'm talking thousand times on a bond trade. And what I learned, and unfortunately, the education around bonds and currency is not all that prevalent uh, in the industry. But what I have learned is the bond market, number one, is the biggest market out there. It is the most liquid market, along with currencies. So liquidity is a big issue when it comes to buying securities. Currencies trade 24-7. Bonds are trade, I believe, you know, five days a week. But it's where the money is. And if you understand bond markets and currency markets, you can definitely set yourself up for winning trades and winning investments. And if you're a macro investor, these are two areas where you're going to capitalize on in creating wealth. So recently, over the last 12 months, currency, or in particular, the US dollar has become top of mind for me. And the reason is, is because of correlation between the US dollar and other assets, the US dollar and the S&P 500, the US dollar and commodities. These correlations are really uh, predicting, they can be predictable uh, for what is to come. And so, for instance, I'll just give you an example. If you go back to March of 2020, when the COVID crisis hit, and there was all of a sudden a major demand for U.S. dollars and a sale on U.S. treasuries or an exchange for US, uh, from U.S. treasuries to U.S. dollars, you saw the dollar make a vertical move higher up around a dollar three or so, dollar five or so, uh, on the dollar. Now today, since there has, uh, the pandemic has settled down and the fear factor has settled down, the US dollar has plummeted from that high of around 1.03, 1.05, all the way down to 89 cents on the dollar. Now that move has a opposite correlation to stocks and we have all benefited from that. Um, U.S. dollars have gotten cheaper, stock market has gone higher, and as we have seen you know, the dollar go down, commodities have gone up. The corn, the copper, the oil, and right now we're seeing oil on this major move higher. Well, the interesting thing is if you can get the U.S. dollar right and you can get interest rate or yields right, like 10-year treasury yields right, you can really set yourself up to create really incredible wealth and also best, I hate to say time the market, but in a sense, anticipate the market's next move. Today, 
a headline came across my uh, computer screen that said, this, is, this indicator is the scariest indicator to the bond market. And it's the Sherman ratio. And the Sherman ratio was developed by Jeffrey Sherman, uh, who works for Double Line, who is the chief investment officer for Double Line Investments. Um, and what it basically is, is you take the yield of the bond or the index or you know ETF or the mutual fund, and then you take the duration, the average duration, and you divide it into it. And what you'll get is a number. And what this number represents is if federal funds rates were to move th over and above this percentage, that intra or that balancing act between yield and bond value all of a sudden evaporates. And so over the last 30 years, we have seen yields fall, meaning bond values have gone up and bond values are at all time highs. I mean, take a look at the 10 year treasury. Uh, it's uh, well, it got down to what, 0.54 or in the point uh, half a percent range at the peak of the uh, uh, pre pandemic crisis. And so what that one of those things that you're looking at is, okay, so that yield went all the way down here, but that value went all the way up here. Well, what's the one thing that they, they tell you? Buy low and buy low and sell high, right? Well, right now, if you're buying bonds or if your 401k is allocated to bonds in any way, you're essentially buying higher which is now creating an environment where recently I got a call from a, a plan participant who said, I've been losing money in my bonds over the last three months. And it's completely understandable because what's happened is corporate bond yields have gone so low and corporate bond values have gone so high. Well, here's the problem. We're in an environment where uh, the Fed has said they're not going to raise interest rates for a long, 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 long time, which is, you know, if you interpret that, it's probably about three years. But why would the Fed raise interest rates? They would raise interest rates because inflation is starting to become rampant. And when inflation becomes rampant and the cost of goods go up, then you have to combat it. Well, how does the Fed combat Rise or rising inflation. They raise interest rates. So I'll give you an example. Hold on one second. So I did this calculation on my napkin, and this is the TLT. And so the TLT is a 30-year bond uh, uh, bond fund uh, ETF. Uh, everybody's, you know, if you're an investor, you've, you've probably heard of it. Well, right now it's paying a 1.51% yield okay that's an average yield over 12 months okay it, it has a 18.95 duration so the average bond duration that's within tlt isn't 30 years it's 18.95 well when you divide the 18.95 into five uh 1.51 percent you come out with 0.0796. Well, what does that mean? What that means is if inflation takes off and the Fed, if the Fed raises interest rates any more than 7.96%, that raising of interest rates will wipe out 18.95 years of interest income. Okay. That, remember that balancing act? I mean, with a bond, you get a yield and you got the value of the bond, you got the principal, so you got this balancing act that can be created. And when they all, when they come basically equal, in other words, two equally weighted um, people on a teeter-totter, you got that balance, so you're safe. So if the, bond, if the bond goes down in value, the yield offsets. Well, what point, if the Federal were to raise interest rates, in this case, if they were to raise them more than 0 0.0796, it would wipe out 18 years, if you've held the TLT for 18 years, 18 years worth of interest income. And all of a sudden, you would have a cascading selling effect that most likely would happen because people would all of a sudden start exiting the bonds and killing the bond market. Now remember, 
10 years ago, 20 years ago, this wasn't really an issue because 10-year treasuries were trading, what, between 3 and 5% on a yield. And so you had 3 to 5% cushion. Today, the IEF, which is the 10-year treasury, has an average duration of 7.85 uh, five years and a yield of 0.95%. It would take just 0.121 uh, basis points for the Fed to raise interest rates, and it would basically kill the 10-year treasury yield and the income you had gotten which also then kills the uh, the bond in a sense. So with what's happened in the last 20, 20 uh, well, excuse me, 12 months with the pandemic, we're in a predicament where the bond market has gotten so big and the going out in time to get better yield on your investment, but also going down in uh, quality, so going from a, you know, a high quality, say U.S. Treasury AA or AAA rated bond, all the way down now to below investment grade, below uh, B into B, which is referred to as high yield or junk bonds. All of a sudden, the yields haven't gotten all that much better between B and, or excuse me, B and B, but in the duration it has, in a sense, shrunk. But they're not, you're not getting paid for the duration anymore. You're not getting paid for the risk you're taking for the length of time of that bond. Here, this, is, this is a predicament. This is a real big predicament because it puts the Fed in a position of if you budge on Fed funds rates, you're going to cook, literally burn the bond market. And all of those retirees are potentially going to get hurt. And they have said, the Fed has said, or Federal Chairman Powell has said many times, they're not raising interest rate, not raising interest rates. But as we see the U.S. dollar devalue, that is a form of inflation. Because now your dollar, back in March, it was, you could buy, you know, a dollar O two of, of goods. Today, you can only buy 89 cents per dollar of goods. So you have that inflationary effect. Now, you know, we don't really think about it, but it, you're not being able to buy as much as you did a year ago. And that's a problem. You know, you rather have a dollar for a dollar, right? Instead of, you know, it's a dollar, but you now owe me, you know, a dollar and 11 cents because your dollar's not worth that. If you like went to Europe or something like that, that's an issue. That's a form of inflation. And so, as that brews and inflation increases and supply, especially supply chains get broken up like they have been over the last 12 months, supply goes down and cost of goods go up, that's a form of inflation. How do you combat that? Well, the Fed raises interest rates. So think of this. 30 years ago, we started this bond rally in a sense. We are now almost at zero Fed funds rate. I think we're at a quarter of a percent, okay, 25 basis points. If the economy doesn't start to recover, we're going to, one of the ways to free up money is to uh, make money inexpensive, and that's why we see those lowering of interest rates. Well, there's not much further to go. Go look at the 10-year German boon. It's trading at a negative yield. So if you're a saver, you're actually being taxed or penalized on saving. And what, in turn, it's forcing you to go out on the risk spectrum and take more risk with that saving money, that uh, money you don't want to jeopardize. Because if you're getting a negative yield, you're basically paying them to hold your money. That's completely ridiculous. So you have to go out on the risk spectrum, which is causing more risk in the equity markets. I mean, look at margin ratios right now. Margins are sky high. They're almost to all, well, I believe they're at all time highs. There's more people taking out margin, leveraging up on their investments. And if you take, uh, if you uh, look at uh, how many brokerage accounts have been opened in 2020, there was roughly 10 million brokerage accounts. There's a ton of new investors in the market, and they're leveraging up. They're using derivatives. They're buying stock on borrowed money. They're leveraging up. So all of a sudden, if you just get one hiccup, 
And typically it can come from the bond market, it can come from the currency market, you get hammered. And with the US dollar back down, bouncing off that uh, 89 cents on the dollar uh, support level, chances are we're gonna see another move higher in the bond market or in the currency market, the US dollar market, which has a adverse effect on the equity market. So the whole point of all of me telling you this is that we're at a point, this is a point in time where it just gets a little creepy and scary. And for those new investors out there, when you're killing it and you're making great money day after day trading this market, you're making more money than you've ever earned in a year, you have to risk manage and ask yourself the question, if it's this easy, should I be doing this or should I be risk managing? I believe we're coming to a point or a crossroads. We may not be there yet. And it looks like the uh, Fed or not the Fed, Biden and Harris plan to, I saw where they, uh, a headline that said $1.9 trillion stimulus package, uh, $1,400 checks, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but more money going into the system, which means printing more money, which means devaluing our dollar, which means inflation, which means we're getting deeper and deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. And eventually we get to a point of hallucinating, figuratively speaking, and all of a sudden, when all of a sudden somebody flips the door open and the bad things come in and gobble you up. I know that's real weird, right? Well, the whole point is you need to be risk managing. And if you're killing it in the market and if you're in corporate bonds, you need to be asking the question, is this the best place to go? Are these corporate bonds, have we been here before when it comes to the low, low yields on these bonds and the values they're at? And at what point will this crack my investment portfolio? I share this with you because it's concerning to me because of all the people who are wanting to retire and how they allocate portfolios towards bonds. You have to understand our world is so greatly changed from what it was 30 years ago. When the Berlin Wall came down and fiber optic connected all of us, all of a sudden the ability to take data and the increase in speed of processing data has just escalated and it's all of a sudden created an environment where central banks have increased the amount of quantitative easing and m printing of money and now we're so leveraged up the question is can we kill keep going at this rate and if so when does it stop 